I got you something. It's called a CD player. It cost me like 700 bucks, but the sound quality is outstanding. You want to play a record? No, Jules, it doesn't play records. It plays CDs. <laughs> it's a CD player. Today, we're diving into the fascinating history of CDs, those shiny discs that revolutionized how we listen to music and stored data. We'll explore how they worked, their rise to popularity, and why they're now becoming relics of the past. Plus, we'll take a peek at the groundbreaking technologies poised to replace them. Stick around. This journey through time and tech is one you won't want to miss. Our story begins in the late 1970s. CDs, or compact discs, were developed by a joint effort between Philips and Sony. They revolutionized the music industry when they hit the market in 1982. Before CDs, vinyl records and cassette tapes were the go-to formats for music lovers. CDs offered something new, crystal clear digital sound quality, and they were much more durable. Unlike vinyl, which could easily scratch and warp, or cassette tapes that could stretch and get tangled, CDs were built to last. So, how do these magical discs work? A CD is essentially a piece of polycarbonate plastic coated with a layer of aluminum. When you pop a CD into a player, a laser beam scans the surface, reading the digital data encoded in tiny pits. These pits are incredibly small, each one measuring just a fraction of a micron. The laser reflects off the smooth areas between the pits, called lands, and the resulting pattern is interpreted as binary data, the ones and zeros that make up digital information. This data is then converted into sound waves, bringing your favorite tunes to life. The process of encoding and reading data on a CD was a marvel of engineering. The introduction of error correction codes allowed CDs to maintain audio fidelity even if the disc was slightly damaged. This was a huge leap forward in ensuring consistent quality and durability. Philips and Sony's collaboration resulted in the Red Book standard, which defined the format for audio CDs and set the stage for the widespread adoption of the technology. By the mid-1990s, CDs had taken over the market they were everywhere, in our homes, cars, and even in our computers. The benefits were clear. CDs were portable, offered superior sound quality, and could hold more data than previous formats. Music albums, software, and even encyclopedias found a new home on these discs. But CDs were more than just a technological advancement. They were a cultural phenomenon. Remember making mixtapes for your friends or burning your own custom playlists? CDs gave us a new way to share and enjoy music. Creating a mixtape or a custom CD was a labor of love, often involving hours of selecting the perfect tracks, arranging them in just the right order, and designing a cover. It was a personal, tangible way to express your tastes and feelings. During their peak, CDs weren't just for music. They became a vital medium for software distribution. Companies could distribute large programs and complex games, and even entire operating systems on a single disc. This was a game changer for the software industry. Educational tools and encyclopedias like Encarta found their way onto CDs, making vast amounts of information accessible in a compact format. In the automotive world, the introduction of in-car CD players changed the driving experience. Long road trips became more enjoyable with the ability to listen to entire albums without needing to swap out tapes. CD changers, which could hold multiple discs, allowed for even greater convenience and variety. However, as with all technology, the reign of CDs wasn't meant to last forever. The late 1990s and early 2000s saw the rise of MP3s and digital downloads. Suddenly, you could carry thousands of songs in your pocket thanks to portable MP3 players like the iPod. This shift was driven by the increasing availability of high-speed internet and the proliferation of personal computers. People began ripping their CDs to digital formats, creating massive libraries of music on their hard drives. Then came streaming services like Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. These platforms offered instant access to millions of songs without the need to own physical copies. 
The convenience and accessibility of streaming have changed the game, making it the preferred method for most people today. No longer were listeners constrained by the physical limitations of CDs. With a streaming service, you had virtually the entire world of music at your fingertips, available anytime and anywhere. Streaming services also introduced new ways to discover music. Algorithms could suggest songs and artists based on your listening habits, creating personalized playlists that catered to your tastes. This level of customization and convenience was something CDs simply couldn't compete with. Best Buy is saying bye-bye to DVDs, the retailer discontinuing sales starting next year. So, why are CDs becoming a relic of the past? The shift in consumer behavior is a big factor. People now prefer the ease of streaming and the ability to access their music library from any device, anywhere. Physical media, including CDs, simply can't compete with the convenience of digital. Moreover, the production and distribution of CDs are not as cost-effective as digital formats. As a result, many artists and record labels are moving away from CDs in favor of digital releases. The environmental impact of producing and disposing of CDs is another consideration. With growing awareness of sustainability, the move towards digital media is seen as a more eco-friendly option. While CDs still hold a place in the hearts of many, their practical use has diminished. Some audiophiles argue that CDs offer better sound quality than compressed digital formats like MP3s, but the majority of listeners prioritize convenience over these nuances. Special editions and collector's items are still produced on CDs, but these are often aimed at niche markets. Scientists from the University of Shanghai for Science and Technology have developed a revolutionary optical disc with an astounding capacity of up to 1.6 petabits, that is 200,000 gigabytes. This disc, similar in size to a Blu-ray, represents a 2,000 times increase in storage capacity compared to the 100 gigabytes of a three-layer UHD Blu-ray. This groundbreaking research was detailed in a paper published in Nature, marking a significant advancement in optical data storage technology. The new disk utilizes a 3D nanoscale architecture with up to 100 layers, each capable of storing massive amounts of data. This innovation overcomes the traditional optical diffraction limit, which has historically constrained the capacity of optical disks. The creation of this high-capacity disk involves several key technological advancements. The researchers employed a novel, light-sensitive material called Aggregation-Induced Emission Doped Photoresist, or AIED-DPR, and Dual Laser Technology to achieve the 3D nanoscale structure. The disk's data is written using a pair of lasers a 515 nanometer green laser to initiate spot formation and a 639 nanometer red laser to halt the writing process. By precisely controlling the timing between these laser firings, the scientists managed to produce data spots smaller than the wavelengths of the lasers themselves. The data is then read using another pair of lasers, a 480 nanometer blue beam to induce fluorescence and a 592 nanometer orange beam to deactivate it. This intricate laser system enables the disk to store data in 100 separate layers, vastly increasing its storage capacity. Moreover, the production process for these disks is compatible with existing DVD manufacturing infrastructure. A blank disk can be produced in approximately six minutes, making it feasible for mass production. The key innovation lies in the light-sensitive AIEDDPR material, which responds differently to various wavelengths of light, allowing precise control over data writing and reading processes. The primary application envisioned for this high-capacity optical disk is in data centers. The ability to store 1.6 petabits on a single disk means that data centers could potentially achieve exabit-level storage within a much smaller physical footprint. This is particularly advantageous in today's era of big data, where storage space and efficiency are critical concerns. 
the researchers believe that their technology can be scaled up to stack nanoscale disks into arrays, creating highly compact and efficient storage solutions. The high durability and longevity of optical disks make them suitable for archival storage, providing a cost-effective and long-term solution for storing vast amounts of data. Additionally, the energy consumption of these nanoscale optical disks is significantly lower than that of traditional storage methods, further enhancing their appeal for large-scale data storage applications. Despite the promising advancements, there are several limitations and challenges associated with this new optical disk technology. One of the primary hurdles is the write speed. Currently, the disk has a writing speed of about 100 milliseconds per data spot, which means writing an entire disk could take a considerable amount of time. This slow write speed necessitates further research to develop more efficient recording materials and methods. Energy consumption during the writing process is another challenge. Although the overall energy efficiency of the optical disk is superior to traditional methods, the energy required for the dual laser system during data writing needs optimization to make the technology more practical for widespread use. Market adoption poses another challenge. Despite the technological capabilities of the new optical disc, the market for physical media has been declining as seen in the decreasing sales of DVDs and Blu-rays. For the new disc to gain traction, there must be a significant shift in consumer or industry demand for high-capacity physical storage media. In summary, while the new 1.6 petabit optical disc developed by the University of Shanghai for Science and Technology, represents a monumental leap in data storage technology, its practical implementation faces several challenges. Improvements in write speed and energy consumption, coupled with market acceptance, are crucial for this technology to realize its full potential in revolutionizing data storage and management. So, there you have it, folks the rise, dominance, and gradual decline of the CD and the incredible new technologies set to replace it. It's amazing to see how far we've come and exciting to think about where we're headed. What are your thoughts on the future of media and data storage? Do you still have a collection of CDs lying around? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching. My name is Jorge Diaz, and you are watching The Explanator. We'll see you next time.